The internet has changed parenting forever and God's word still continues to hold up the standard by which we should live our lives. Mm -hmm. So what does the Bible have to say about YouTube, Facebook, and other platforms? In today's episode, author and speaker Mandy Majors is here to talk about raising our kids in a digital world. Sure, the enemy has his schemes, but God offers wisdom to all who seek it. Stay where you are, there's a lot to cover. Welcome to The Difference. Kendall and I are so pleased to welcome back Mandy Majors. She's the founder and executive director of Next Talk, but more importantly, she's a mother mm -hmm. who's had to navigate how to parent in a cyber and digital age. Yes. Uh, Mandy, in, in one of our last conversations, you were talking about your perspective versus your husband's perspective, and, and it made me think, you know, how important is it to come into agreement because that's something that Kendall and I are always working towards. towards. We're not and perfect, the reason I say we're we... working towards it is because we are seldom naturally in agreement. agreement. Yeah, I mean, we both agree we hey, need we to be need to aware of this and we got to do something, but, but... We're, we're very different in how we approach it. Absolutely. This is such an important question. With us, I remember taking Matt the solution and said, I found it. And dude, your husband's name, Matt? Matt. Matt. Oh. He, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. I'm going to tell oh you, gosh, what I'm a genius with another Matt. this husband is. We're, I mean, yeah, how could you argue maybe. with Matt? I know, I know. right? I know. <laughs> Matt I know. knows everything. Sorry, I, I hadn't shared his name yet. Yeah, yeah. Good. Um, yeah so I, t I took this information to Matt because we would always pray at night. You know, we had this ritual in our home, pray with our kids, come to bed, pray, mm. you know, before we went to bed, whatever. And, and I was telling him, I found the solution. I have found it. And I remember his it's immediate response yeah. was, you're expecting me to talk to our kindergartner boy about sex. Like, I don't even know how to do that. And, and I felt very deflated because I felt like it was a Holy Spirit, God was giving yeah. me a solution to this whole problem we were looking at. And the next day he called me on the way to work, he has a long commute, and he was like, I owe you an apology. He said, I, I saw your face and I saw that you were really excited, like this is the solution God is giving us. And he said, I just need to be honest with you, we never talked about these things. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know how to do, do it. it. And he said, you are gifted in the sense of you can sit down with our kid and have a kumbaya moment. I'm not that dude. dude. Yeah. And so he's like, I don't know it's how honest. to do it. And he said, but I give you my blessing. Like try to create this new culture that you're talking about of conversation in our home and just let me know how it's going. So <laughs> I'm so, with you, but I'm not there. But it's just yeah. not, well, at least so, he was I, At least though. he was like, I trust you enough that God gave you this to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I had his blessing. So I did, and every night we would pray with our kids and I would report back to him. I yeah. would say, oh my gosh, I they picked this be. kid up from school today and they asked me this. And before I would have just swept that under the rug because it's too hard to answer, but I actually answered it. And then this started happening Happened. and then they yeah. started confiding. And so he could see my excitement and one day, he he had to take the kids to school one morning. That's normally my job, but but he, but I had a responsibility, a meeting. And he called me and he said, and this was halfway through, I was writing my book. He called me and he said, it works, it, it works. works. Yeah. He doesn't get excited. So I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, this open communication thing. I was in the car 10 minutes with one kid and we covered so much stuff. And I was like, see, it doesn't have to be this 30 minute long conversation. Yeah. It can be like a five minute car ride. And it doesn't always have to be punitive. Yes. You know, you, one of the things that, that I learned as a parent in, in just having conversation with my kids is that you can have correction without punishment. Yeah. And, and all it is is just adjusting their perspective. Yes. Okay, I see how you saw that. Yes. But what if you looked at it this way? And suddenly they have this eureka moment where they're like, oh, there's more than one way to approach something. And, you know, when you have that dialogue, not only with your spouse, but also with your children, when do you take that outside of your family circle to help other parents understand, hey, when my son comes around your son, these aren't, these aren't cool. Yeah. You know, because that's a big part of it. Because, yeah. you know, when kids Company. know what's not allowed in your house, they'll try and find the house where it is allowed just so they can go see what it's like. Absolutely. Well, I think it's a conversation first. For us, it was a conversation first with the grandparents. 
And uh -huh. we had to have that conversation. Oh, you mean grandparents will con <laughs> contradict yes. parents? The house <laughs> well, of yes. What was happening was one of the big things that I saw right away was like online predators and grooming and mm -hmm. stuff. And they would always ask kids to keep secrets. Yeah. Like wear a red shirt today and take a picture and, and don't tell anybody that's our special secret. And it seemed like harmless little stuff. stuff Listen starts. to this song, don't tell anybody. And then let's discuss the lyrics. And they were building relationships with kids online. And so I told Matt, let's just have a no secrets family policy. Like, like, like you gotta tell mm -hmm. us what's going on. So we started that. Well, one time they went to grandparents for overnight sleepover and they had like, you know, eight popsicles for breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that whole conversation was don't tell your parents. Uh -huh. Well, my son got in the car and we had just started this and he was like, fidgeting and I'm like, what is wrong? And he's like, they told me to keep a secret from you. And I'm like, what? And he said, I had all these popsicles, popsicles. for breakfast. Yeah. And it was in that moment, I was like, I need to have a conversation with them. And so I told them, I was like, it's fine that he has eight popsicles for breakfast. Yeah. Like, yeah. I that's, don't want to- That's one of the reasons he came over I don't want to take away your fun, spoil your grandkids. It's but I explained to them about the online secret, predators yeah. and the secrets. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm trying to figure out how to parent well in the digital world and I need your help. So one thing that we cannot do as a family is no secrets. No secrets. Yeah. Even if yeah. it's harmless and little because kids get confused because the, you know, the online predator is saying wear a red shirt and take a picture and it's our little secret. That seems harmless, harmless too. But yeah. Yeah. So having those conversations are really good. And then talking to your community and their friends just, you know, I've, this is something new we're trying. How would you feel if we all got on the same, same page, page here? One yeah. of the things I used to do when my kids were little, when we hosted sleepovers or whatever, phones are on the kitchen counter. Oh, we're yes. not gonna have any phones. Yeah. And I would let the moms know ahead of time. And then my kids got a certain age and then they were responsible for communicating it with their with their friends. You know, yeah. middle school hit. I'm like, you're responsible. Send and, the group text out and tell it's them. It's interesting them. because, you know, you will have people in your friend community or in, in your school groups and things that will, try and justify why their child requires what you prevent in your home. And you well, need to be- they have a phone in fourth grade because well, or, I, I know, don't need to reach them. But or, you don't understand, they call me every night before they go to bed. Well, that's fine, they can walk down to the living room, get their phone, I'll watch them make the phone call and then I'm taking the phone back. Yeah. But what if they miss me in the middle of the night? Well, then you can come pick them up at 2 a.m. <laughs> you know, but you, you have to draw some of those boundaries. Yes. Otherwise, you know, the world is dictating to you what happens in your home. And I think parents need to give themselves permission to be in charge of what God has given them control over. You know, I mean, we have, we're responsible. We have been absolutely. entrusted with these with little these souls yeah. to steward them well. And we, that's a great responsibility as a parent. Yes. And the other thing is talk to your kids about different house, different rules. Like other people that's see this good. differently, right? Yeah. And I respect yeah. them and that's fine, but this is why. I think it's really important to have the phones on the kitchen yeah. counter. Like I would well, say- our kids understand if you come over to our house, you will take your shoes off at the back door. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and when their friends come over who wear their shoes in the house, Oop. they're like, uh-uh, no, no, no. She's already- Yeah, take those shoes off. So if they can learn that one, they, they can, can learn, learn the yes. phone one, they can learn any of the other ones. They just pick and choose which ones they like better yeah. than the others. You know, when we come back, we're going to continue this very important conversation with Mandy and give you some practical tips about how you can get started in making sure that your family has clear understanding about the do's and don'ts of what happens in a digital world in your home. As the world around us seems to take a very dark turn, you might ask yourself, is it possible to prosper in every area of life, even in such perilous times? The answer is yes. Are you trusting Him to lead the way and show you what steps to take next? In Him, you have the ability to prosper, to help you grow in your faith and learn how to trust the Lord through your storms. We want to send you a copy of our inspiring 100-day devotional title, Stormproof, and a set of Stormproof Magnetic Bookmarks. This invaluable resource is our our gift to you for your support of any amount. For your generous donation of $150 or more, we'll also send you our Stormproof Journal and a bundle of 100 uplifting scripture postcards aligned with the themes of the Stormproof Devotional. To carry these treasures and more, we're pleased to include our stylish anchored tote bag. When you fill your mind with the word, the enemy can no longer control you because your mind is set on things not of this world. Call the number on screen or go to jhm.org slash storm. Welcome back to The Difference. Our guest is Mandy Majors, and she is the founder of Next Talk. 
It's a platform where parents can understand more about the things that their children are exposed to in a digital and cyber world mm -hmm. and how to address them in their homes, in their relationships, and create a healthy and safe environment for their entire family. Uh, Mandy, in your books and, and, and much of your content, you discuss topics that most people would rather not discuss. discuss. And, yeah. and it's not for shock. You know, sometimes people say things just to get the <gasps> response. You have to discuss them because they're very, very real. And most people would prefer to be complacent, apathetic, or ignorant because predators and sex trafficking and the, the dark world that is utilizing technology to recruit children into this lifestyle, they're very real and they're out there. How do you come up with the courage to do that and why? Well, Satan wants us to stay silent. Mm -hmm. And I think I saw that in a lot of parents contacting me. You know, I've learned a lot in this space and I, I talk with a lot of parents about what's happening in their homes. And I kept seeing this same thing happening when they were afraid to talk. That's when the kids were going down a oh, bad path, yeah. almost yeah. always. And so having the courage to just be like, God has me. There have been times when I didn't know what I was gonna say or how I was gonna answer their questions. And I would pray about it. I would talk to a mentor. I would read the word of God. I can't tell you how many times God has awakened me in the middle of the night and said, this is what He's your kid say. needs in this space. You know, cause each kid is different. Yeah. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit, like God knows that. He's creator, he knit them together. Yes. And so allowing that, to be a part of this. And I, it sounds so cliche, yeah. but it's so true. Like God will equip you as a parent. Yes. Now, in that moment of being equipped, I think it's also fair to state that sometimes when God gives you that insight, you don't have this fairy godmother moment where you go, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. I so appreciate no. you telling me. When you hear those things, I know in my life, when I hear them, I'm like, oh. oh. I have to go do this. Yes. You know, it, it's almost like you're now burdened with it until you actually take action on it, which yes. I think there's a lot of parents who are watching and they feel that burden. Yeah. They know they have to take action on this, but it's so overwhelming. It is. It's, it, it's, it's like, hey, I've already blown it. Where I've do given I start? them, you know, this resource and free reign over it, and I don't even want to begin to know. Where does that parent begin? Well, I think first of all, just giving yourself some grace. This whole thing has blindsided everybody. Schools are struggling, yeah. churches yeah. are struggling, struggling, parents are struggling. So first of all, just give yourself some grace. It's okay. And second of all, I think the conversation should be with your kid. So instead of maybe guns blazing, I'm taking away your phone, <laughs> give me all, those all social media is deleted, yeah. and they've done nothing wrong. Yeah. If you do that, that's going to hurt your relationship. That's yes. the farthest thing that I want from you. Yeah. Satan wants that, yeah. but that's, yes, that's not what yeah. God wants. Division is his game. Yeah, absolutely it is. So I think the conversation becomes, and I always tell parents, throw me under the bus. Like when, I, when I'm at an event, <laughs> hey, I've already, I'm like, about I've already said I'm meeting with somebody today. Her name is Mandy, and we're going to have some new boundaries when I come home okay. today. Okay, <laughs> so this is perfect. <laughs> So that explains the <laughs> attitude at breakfast. I was like, why is everybody so mad this I morning? Everybody hates me. Yeah. I have some tips. I'm good. Okay, but, but here's, here's the thing. You can say to your kid, I thought I was going to go in and she was like, boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Yes, but what no. she told me was, I need to educate y'all on why we need boundaries. That's good, yes. So there are people literally waiting to have a conversation with you. And one of yeah. the big things that online strangers will say is they will pit you against your parents. I always tell kids, watch out for that. If there's yes. anybody online or in real life yeah. that is like your parents don't, you know, they're bad people yeah. or trying to get you to feel like you don't have a safe place at home. That's a mm, red that's so flag good. alert yeah. that something is very wrong. The individuals who are bad actors, the, the groomers and, and the predators, they don't start at level 10. No. no. You know, they don't start by showing you this graphic image and saying, hey, kid, what do you think of this? It, it would be easy to identify them if that was the case. They start not even at level zero. They start below that and build layers okay. and levels of trust. And then somewhere along the way, they, they, they start to transition from wholesome and appropriate to questionable and then from questionable to concerning and then from con they just it's kind of like the frog in the pot they keep yep. turning up the heat until you're boiling and you don't know how to jump out and and as a parent you want your child to be able to understand 
at any point you can come to me. Yeah. Yes, I even, as your kid gets older and they're more in the digital space, I always say, even if you make a mistake, even if you find yourself doing something that you were like, whoa, I don't, can't believe I got roped into this, but then they're holding it over your head and they're saying, if you don't do this more, mm -hmm. that is just yeah. a red flag alert. Like, I'm gonna love you the same. I'm gonna yeah. love you like God loves you. And that is unconditional. But, but I will help you figure it out. Like we'll walk hand in hand to try and figure this out. I think older kids sometimes just need to hear that because yes. they get into these online relationships and it seems so sweet at first. We always use a scale of zero to 10. 10 is crisis mode. You know, 10 is your kid is being sex trafficked. I mean, it's yeah. crisis yeah. mode. But the over here at one, two, and three, what we're trying to do as an organization is prevent the 10 from happening through the conversations through the yeah. and through kids being able to identify the red flag alerts, mm -hmm. the secrets, the pitting me against my parents, you know, things yeah. like that, that will just make them be like, something is really off here. Because I say to my kids, your brain's not fully developed yet. Uh, yes. I know you're impulsive. I was a teenager once. I was a horrible teenager. Like my kids know that, right? And so if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're like, mom's going to be disappointed in me or dad, I want you to know I'm going to love you the same. same. Like That's we're going to get through it together as a family. You can always confide in me. And I think that having that safe place to land is just so good for these kids because they've yeah. got so much stuff coming at them so fast mm. and their little brains are trying to process it and if they don't have a safe place to ask those questions they're gonna drown so yeah. what about a parent that's watching they provided this safe place yeah. they've tried the open communication but they have a child that's just defiant doesn't want to talk yeah. just wants their phone wants to sit in their room all day long what do you suggest for parents that have opened this communication but just doesn't get well, the same back. You need to be completely honest. We need a reset. This okay. is not working. We're trying it and we're, it, it's, it's not working. And so what am, I always say too, ask your kid like, what am I doing wrong? How can yeah, I be good. a better mom? How can I be, let them talk first. And then hopefully they'll reciprocate. And then you can say, can we, can you help me here? And kind of meet in the middle, especially if you have an older kid, yes. you know, where they've already, they Years have, of yes. Open, yeah. and, and, you know, you're talking about zero to 10 situations and, and certainly in, in the space of, you know, harmful behaviors, 10 is always the top. If you've got a level 10 issue in terms of defiance with a kid, I always tell parents, if you're paying the bill, you're the thrill. You can shut it off just that fast yeah. because this stuff isn't free. Yes, right? that's true. So, you know, if you need a reset and it's got to be a drastic one, yeah. I think, that's you know, you, you hear about rehabilitation and in certain cases with extreme addiction, you have to be totally removed from the environment. Well, there are certain situations mm. where you need to totally remove it from your environment for a period of time to where everybody can understand what healthy is and what healthy is not. And absolutely. And counselors that you trust yeah. and that have been vetted, you know, psychologists, yeah. ev bring in everybody. You need a village. Bring you need team. a community if you are at a level 10 for sure. Absolutely. So we're talking a little bit about screen addiction. When we come back, we're going to find out, does your kid have it or do you? You're watching The Difference. Don't go away. I'm so grateful that I chose differently. I'm so happy that I chose you. I get to see you become the person God intended you to be. I'm grateful for Sanctuary of Hope, for preparing me, for guiding me. Most importantly, Sanctuary of Hope is my safe place. It's where I can lay my baby's head down and know that God has a shield of protection over us. Thank you, Hagee Ministry Legacy Partners. Because of you, my baby has a chance. Because of you, I had the option to choose life. There has never been a better time to share the love of Christ with a mother and a child than right now. When you partner with Hagee Ministries, your legacy impacts lives and transforms a nation. Call today or go to jhm.org slash partner. Welcome back to The Difference. Mandy Majors is our guest. Mandy, you've been helping Kendall and I, even in this conversation, understand some things that we need to go home and discuss with our family. Um, but sometimes when we get into these conversations with our kids about screen time, 
they turn the mirror back around and look at us and they say, well, you're always on your device. Now, it's easy for me to justify, well, it's work. But what kind of example does that set in this context when everybody's got their own justification? Well, this is where you got to be a good role model. Yeah. And, you know, I you know. You can't escape that one. Absolutely. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and I think if we're honest, we all kind of have, our phones have a stronghold on us. I mean, mm-hmm. I, that's yeah. what I tell my kids. Yeah. And there is a difference, I believe, between a stronghold and an addiction. And so I, I'm always telling my kids we have to be very careful with the word addiction because it is it is reserved for severe cases. We don't want to overuse no, no, it. No. But let's all be honest. And, I'll, you know, this is me talking to my family. Our phones have a stronghold on us. So how are we going to hold each other accountable so it doesn't become an addiction? Mm-hmm. Because over at adi- over here at addiction, we see families ruined. Absolutely. We see bad choices. And we don't want any of that for any of us. So how do we hold each other accountable? And it's a group effort. Quite mm-hmm. frankly, yeah, um, you know, meals are off limits for us with Absolutely. screens. Uh, at night, you know, I mentioned no phones in bedrooms or bathrooms. Well, my husband, he has a, he has to have his phone for night. Sometimes he gets calls yeah. in the middle yeah. of the night. We explain that to the kids. You know, he's not up scrolling Instagram at 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. It is over yeah. there just for work emergencies. And so that's the difference. Um, and so just having that open communication of we're all learning. And, yeah. and I let my kids call me out. If, that, if I've been on Facebook or Instagram a <laughs> no, little too much, like they're allowed to call me out on it as long as I can do that for you too. Like it's an equal accountability thing. You know, I think you've very practically established, you know, a rule that Kendall and I have is dinner time, sacred time. Yes. And not only is it a no digital thing, but it's also um, a moment where we want everyone to share equally mm. because, you know, we've got four kids. Some personalities are stronger than others. Some are talkative. Some are listeners, you know. And if you're not careful, uh, you know, it can become imbalanced. And and you get to hear all about one person's day. And then when they're done talking, they say, enough about me. Let's you talk about me. You know, and it's like, no, you got to pass this around. And, And it teaches those equal values. And I think those are important places where you start to show your child you know, the, the modern term would be a moral compass, mm-hmm. but balance, you know, how important is that in terms of navigating this digital space? Because, you know, you want your child to be able to identify right from wrong and not just gullibly walk into everything. Okay. Having a moral compass is one of the key things that we teach over at Next Talk. And, you know, we, we speak to all parents, Christian and non-Christian, and we say, no matter what it is, they need to know right from wrong. Mm-hmm. For us as Christians, obviously the Bible is our moral compass. Yes. So I'm I'm thankful actually. I don't have to come up with what's right and wrong. Yes. Like, I don't have to play those that, that God. And so it is just constantly, what does the Bible say about this? Even from little things, your kid comes home and you know, they're saying, my friend has a crush on so-and-so and they've asked me to lie to the, to the boy because yeah. I can't tell the boy. Well, what, a, what is lying? Is lying yes. okay? So let's go to scripture. Let's look at that. And then we problem solve together. Okay, so you don't want to lie because that is, that's not biblical. So what if you just say, go ask him. I'm, I'm out of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm not even going to yeah. be a part of this. Just go directly to this person. That way you're not lying, but you're also being a good confidant, you know? Yeah. And so helping your kid navigate that gray area through a moral compass, through the Bible, I think is really important, even with little issues. Yeah. Because if you do that with little issues, then when they get really big issues, well, you're still sending them to God's Word. God's word yeah, I mean, you talk about deception. How many parents have filled in an inaccurate birthday so that their child can get a social media profile because you have to have a minimum age requirement and the kid's under the age? You've just taught your child to be deceptive if, if it gets you what you want. 100%. You know? 100%. It's the role model. Yeah. It's the role model situation. So in the network of counselors you have, How many of those counselors would tell you that America has a screen addiction issue? Well, they're all saying, I'm seeing changes in kids, you know, and and all the problems that they're navigating. Mm -hmm. And we, I think we're going to be studying this for years and years, Mm -hmm. but we already know the more screen, the more mental health. Like we're seeing the rise in that already. And and so across the board with Christian and non-Christian families. And so we have to take note of that. It's very important. You've got to make sure your kid is mentally healthy. If they're not, they're not ready for social media. And then as you're implementing social media, you have to keep 
I, I mean, praying over that kid and keeping, like checking the temperature. I'm always like checking the temperature of my mental health of each kid to make sure we're good. And if I mm -hmm. see any red flags, it's, you know, I'm in the phone, I'm trying to figure out what, random phone checks, I'm all okay. for it. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. That, Cause you have yes. some parents go, well, that's their phone. I'm not gonna get involved. Okay, I'm not gonna no. read messages. I, when we gave phone, that was clear expectations and boundaries up yeah. front. When we gave phones, I'm paying for I'm it. I'm coming at any time. And, Anytime. and it is not a diary. If you yeah. want a diary, go write. Go in write one. it in a book. <laughs> because I will tell you right now, if there's a murder, the FBI is going yeah. through your phone. Oh, yeah. And exactly. they're gonna, they can get anything and everything. I have seen Every this yes. on cases yeah. that we've worked on. So yes. it's not private. Your phone is not a diary. Do you and it's make not sure private. the kids give you their passwords? You they, have passwords of all their. Apps when they were and... little, absolutely. Obviously, my 19 year old, yes. she's flying solo now. Yes. My yes. 16 year old, I still have many passwords of his, but mm -hmm. he's earning a little bit of freedom there. Freedom. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, and, and you know, you talk about mental health checks and that's a big word these days. And a lot of people think that if you're doing a mental health check, there must be something wrong. But I mean, a health check is a health check. You go to the doctor when you're well, well for a physical, just to make sure you're well. What does a mental health check from, uh, you know, a parent look like so that parents can kind of understand this is a conversation where you're able to identify those things? Well, if you see unlikely behavior, like all of a sudden, and there's going to be some, you know, when mm -hmm. they start high school, when they start middle school, that transition, yeah. Puberty, the first couple all months, kinds of stuff yes. you're going to see yeah. all sorts of things, more anger, you know, more sadness, more overwhelming. That's normal. But if you see it continually, loss of appetite, um, they're just responding to you in ways that are very unlike them. And again, teenagers, they're gonna start being shorter they with fluctuate. their answers. They do. <laughs> so you just have to know your kid. I, I know sometimes I'll say to my husband, okay, we gotta watch this kid. There's something going on. And then I give it a couple weeks to see. see. And then it'll even out or it mm -hmm. won't. And then mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. okay, we Escalate. need to go to a counselor. It, be proactive. Mm -hmm. Don't wait until the 10 is happening to get your kid to a counselor or a trusted professional. Yeah, it's well, and, and make sure that your child understands that you have that and their best interests at heart. You know, you're not doing this because something's wrong. You're doing this because we want you to feel safe. We want you to feel well. We want you to do the best that you can, and this is helping us to accomplish that. Absolutely. One of the things that I say to my kids is, you know, I work with a lot of families, and I see kids cutting and depressed and mm. self-harming themselves because they're overwhelmed and they have the yeah. same, same stressors that you do often. They just haven't learned to cope with it cope in with a it. healthy way. Yeah. And so sometimes they don't know how to express those big emotions so they'll end up cutting themselves or pulling their hair out because they're just trying to figure out how to, to deal with those big emotions going on inside. And so I'll say to my kids, I don't want that for you. Yeah. So let's talk about it. And anytime you're laying your head on the pillow and something keeps in your head bothering you, address it. that is something Satan wants you to not tell anybody about that. That is what you need to tell me the most. Because yeah. whatever's bugging you, and maybe it's a bully, maybe it's I feel awkward because of this, this, and this, whatever it is, if you, if it keeps coming back, like we need There's to have a conversation that. about yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Well, if you'd like to find out more about Mandy's organization, Next Talk, online is the best way to do it, nexttalk.org. And I encourage you to start conversations with your children to find yes. out where they're at and where you as a parent need to be to support them. It's a digital age. It's not going to be something you can escape or eliminate, but it is something you can navigate with good principles, God's word, and great help. Mandy, thank you for being that thank help. Thank you so Mandy, much so for much. having me. Kendall and I are so glad that you've joined us today. God bless you, and thank you for watching The Difference.